Hi uh, everyone, today I'm with Donovan Paneotis. He is the CEO of Levels Fight League, LFL. Uh, this is an English but Dutch-based uh, MMA promotion, right? It is, yes. Yeah. Do you want me to uh, yeah, yeah, elaborate? Yeah, yeah so um, obviously uh, I'm from the UK and um, I've been here for uh, probably 10 years now. So obviously I should be speaking Dutch, but uh, <laughs> I'm not yet. And um, yeah, I've trained here myself. Uh, I used to train, uh, compete under Melvin Manhoff. I don't know if you know know him. He's uh, one of the like legends of the of the uh, I guess of kickboxing and MMA. And um, yeah, I trained here. Then end up sort of like uh, giving a bit of personal training and uh, obviously you know uh, teaching, and then just kind of rolled into uh, to putting on shows. And yeah, a few years later, here we are with uh, LFL. I think we're on the uh, the sixth. Is it number six? Seven. The seven. Next one will be oh, yeah. Seven. Sorry. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> so this is going to be a seventh show. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what made you, uh, you know, put the LFL, uh, uh, you know, league in the Netherlands, not in uh, England? I live here and uh, train here, and like I've uh, explained before, we have like a, a, a fight team ourselves, um, and uh, we just kind of saw like. Um, there was a space for for MMA. Like obviously, it's a kickboxing nation. Um, I think I think arguably the best kickboxer in the world come from here, but there wasn't too much for MMA, you know. And um, I think just the success of the show kind of proves that there the, there was a space for it. So uh, it just feels like uh, the doors have just uh, opened quite easily for us. And uh, like I explained. We have our, our seventh show coming up, so it's uh, it was definitely time. Yeah, uh, I do agree. Uh, the Netherlands is a kickboxing nation, but the MMA has been lacking a bit. Uh, now you guys are already the biggest uh, MMA promotion in the Netherlands. Uh, now what's uh, what's your uh, next goal? Uh, I don't focus that too much um, on that, to be honest. I just want to keep doing what we're doing, be consistent. Um, so I have a lot of small goals like consistency, uh, making sure everybody's okay, uh, get a champion in each of the, the, of the divisions we're going to focus on. Um, you know, just be like the best platform that we can. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, the long term goal would be like to be like something like the glory of MMA, let's say. Yeah. yeah. Uh that makes sense. Um, right now, you guys have seven shows in uh, three years, I think. Uh, how many uh, shows do you guys want to have this year? Well, we're going to go for six, uh, seven this year. Yeah, we're um, sort of contractually obligated to do six, but um, we had a bit of a, an idea for a different format that we're going to play around with um, at the beginning of summer. So that's going to, I'll leave that as like a bit of a cliffhanger for people, you know. But uh, yeah, we're going to go for seven, seven shows this year. And uh, I think we're, we've been around for like two, two and a half years. So yeah. Uh, you guys are obligated to have six. Is that like a deal with Fiat Play you guys have? It is. It is. Yeah. Um, we uh, obviously consistency is key, especially for, for these uh, streaming platforms, you know, like they want to be able to, um, there's content is key for them, I guess. So, you know, if we said, okay, we're going to do like one show every two years, it's not very interesting for them, you know? So uh, we um, we could have done more, but we didn't want to disappoint. So we kind of set the bar like for what is manageable for us because we're a pretty small team for now. So uh, yeah, it's, we're going to, we set the the, uh, the level at six and um, we'll see how uh, 2023 goes. Yeah, um, you guys will have six shows, uh, but how did you land the uh, deal with Fiaplay? Because Fiaplay is pretty big. Uh, just not giving up. A lot of phone calls. Um, yeah, um, also some uh, um, other organizations, uh, KSW uh, gave us a hand. Um, they saw a lot of potential in us and um, we kind of have a little bit of a... You know, understanding where, you know, we understand we're not the the biggest show for now. And um, they said, like, if you get some, some solid fights or some big names, perhaps we can have a little bit of synergy between the two, two organizations. 
Um, so we kind of stuck to our, our side of the bargain and um, in return, I said, hey, you know, I see you've got like deals with Fireplay and such. Do you think you could put a good word in for us? And uh, within a couple of weeks, we're on the phone to, um, um, not the CEO, that would have been nice, but somebody who, who, who uh, picks a programming. And uh, we had a good chat with them. And that's kind of where it, it started. So yeah, that's where Fireplay came from. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you guys obviously have uh, Tom Breeze and Jason Wellness. Uh, they are fighting for both KSW and uh, for you guys. Uh -huh. But how did you land th those fighters as well? Because Tom Breeze, ex-UFC fighter. Rossum Ackman, also an ex-UFC fighter. Glory fighters as well. How did you manage that? Um, so, as I explained, I used to train. I came here to train. Um, I was pursuing an MMA, MMA career myself. Um, I could box English style. I could uh, my jiu-jitsu. I'd just been to like Brazil for, you know, like a year, and um, I was on like a bit of a quest to get my MMA game together. And um, yeah, everyone was telling me like, uh, most people go to to uh, Thailand, but everyone was saying, listen, like it's across the water. Just go to to uh, the Netherlands, you know. So I came here and uh, trained like uh, all the top gyms, Vosh Gym, Majiro, Mike's Gym and so on. And you kind of get to know people on the circuit, you know. So, uh, for example, you, Sui, uh, um, uh, I never trained with Jason, but, but Myrtle, uh, Miles Simpson, these guys, we all would train together. So when they see that, um, that we're working with an MMA show, it's like, oh, I know that guy. You know, they reach out to me and it's like, I'm thinking of getting into MMA. What do you think? So um, that's basically um, how the the, um, the kickboxers come through because we used to train together, and I also used to go out to TriStar for my training camps, and I actually would be in the dormitories, and like, uh, do, do you know the uh, TriStar? I know TriStar. Do you know how the dorms be. work? The dormitories? Uh, no. So basically, imagine this space, and just chop it into say 20 rooms. So you're in a room full of fighters, basically, in, in, a, in a dormitory full of fighters. So you've all got your separate bedrooms. So you basically, you, you live together, you train together, you eat together after practice, and you, know, you form these sort of uh, bonds and relationships with, uh, with the fighters. So when Tom, um, he became a free agent from the UFC, he just called me, he's like, listen, I see what you're doing over there. Like, mate, I just want to be active. Keep me active and uh, we'll figure something out. So that's kind of uh, where it came, how Tom came. And uh, Rostam came through another uh, another good friend of mine, Ian, Ian Radan, a uh, great guy, help, actually helped out a lot with the show. And uh, he's going to be working, um, I think they're going to be having, do you know Arthur Sapaniak? No. He's going to fight for the KSW title soon. Uh, Ian's his manager and the managing uh, they're starting to move into like management of some of the fighters and Rostam was one of the guys. So Ian just reached out and says, hey, can you, can you get him on the show? So we found um, an a suitable opponent and uh, this is going to be his debut for us. So... Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy to hear that such a, you know, just starting promotion. Uh, normally, you guys will have to reach out to fighters, but most of the fighters so reach out to you guys. Indeed, especially, um, I mean, people... I've developed quite a network over the years, which had, was completely un unintentional, you know, it was just through sort of like me pursuing my own goals uh, as a fighter. And um, yeah, I guess it pays dividends now when, uh, like you say, people are reaching out to me like to, to get on the show. And obviously the lads uh, that work with me, Andy and, and Jules, you know, they're basically, uh, scouring the internet for, for new talent as well you know so we um we've got a good team we all work together and um you know the, a lot of the big names we already know uh, from from uh, from from my uh, my uh, network but we're also collecting a lot of new guys who are coming in now who, who have a massive potential i think you just met alan nader alan uh, van der Merck, gino um you know, these guys are, uh, are maybe two and three and now, but I think they're going to be uh, just as big, if, if not bigger, than some of the guys at the top of the card we have right now. 
Yeah, I do agree. You guys, uh, like you said, Alain Nader, Gina von Steen is you know, are very good guys. Uh, yeah. David Kassam, all this as well. Of course, yeah. yeah. Very ta talented kids guys. Are, kids are monster, yeah. Yeah. Short notice against uh, Jason Wilness uh, at 20 years you of know, age. And he went the distance. And uh, for me, man, when I see these young lads, it makes me glad I'm retired. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't want no part of... Uh, and uh, David's my weight as well, you know, so... Um, yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm excited to see where these guys go. Yeah, well, uh, I'd like to wish you guys, uh, you know, um, much success. And I mean, I'm very happy that LFL exists because it, it is something that uh, truly elevates MMA in the Netherlands. And yeah, I, I just love to see that and hope Great. to so see much. you guys grow in the future.